Uh, I don't know why I am so big on Facebook. I don't know. Alright, I didn't turn my camera on either. I mean my light on. Oh. I like it at the lowest setting. Alright, Facebook. I don't know what I did, but I don't know. Like, this is where I always put my phone. This is my new place to put my phone. And I don't know why I'm not getting a full picture. Um, I'm going to move this out a little bit if I can. Maybe that will help. That just did not help because I have it on the charger too. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Alright. YouTube, your camera looks pretty good tonight. So, okay. Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I am having to regroup on. Well, now it's like full screen. I don't understand. Alright, this is so weird. Alright, hang on. Hang on, YouTube. I will be with you shortly. Hang on. I've got to go get something to put this on. I'm going to pull this back up again. Alright, I will be right back. So sorry. Oh, I don't have to go too far. Yeah, I don't know why my chair <laughs> turns around by itself. I don't know. It's weird. Let me see if I can put it on this. But this doesn't have anything about the charge. It's like the whole picture was looking weird. Alright, let's try again. My goodness. Oh my goodness. It's all. It seems to always be something with these apps. Alright, it's doing the same thing. Like, alright, there is my full face though. Okay. Just don't have a full screen for some reason. It's so, I don't know why things can't just be, I don't know why they can't just stay the way they are. Now, like, my, okay. We're just going to roll with it, and I am so sorry. Number one, I'm late. I was supposed to be here at 5.30. And also, now I have this little thing going on. Let me see if I can scoot it back a little bit. And see if that helps. Oh, no. <sighs> Alright, this is very annoying. So you can't even see the top of my head. I'm trying to figure out how to fix it. Okay, maybe this. No, it didn't stay. This thing has a... Sorry, YouTube. It has a ball that's supposed to keep it back. Alright, well. Alright. <laughs> so sorry about the technical difficulties. Okay. So my other video, though, it... Okay. I'm just not even going to worry about it. Okay, so hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I hope you had an awesome day. I had an awesome day. It's an awesome Tuesday. Tomorrow's Wednesday. I think we're trying to decide whether to have youth or not because we have some people in our church that are sick. But what I want to do 
Tonight is Unpacking Passion 22. Okay, I have how many pages? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 15 pages. Well, 16. 16 pages. <laughs> Front and back of notes. Of notes from Passion 22. And my handwriting is so bad. Yep, Passion 22. And their saying was, All for Jesus. And like I explained before, it was global. So it was streamed online for free, plus there were 60,000 plus people at Mercedes-Benz in Atlanta. So let's go ahead and pray. God, we just praise you and thank you for the time that you've given us, that we can come and learn more about your word, that I can share what your messengers shared with me, God. I just pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to what you want to teach us, and maybe you will reveal something else. You probably will that I didn't see when I wrote it down. I just pray that it makes sense. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well before we dive into this, I have made a decision, I think, that at 9 o'clock I want to do my coffee treasures. And then at 5 o'clock, I want to do ATM Pray and Share because YouTube is taking like two hours to upload anything that I do lately. I don't know whether it's my new camera. I don't know why it is so slow. And I am not smart enough. I am not tech savvy enough to figure it out. So, 9 o'clock. And five o'clock. Nine o'clock coffee treasures. I am still having my coffee. I'm a little um, sleepy, but nine o'clock and then five o'clock in the afternoon. And my hair looks so pitiful, but I had to go today and do some things. And this is my work look. I like my hair off my neck and out of my face when I'm working. Okay, well, so I have nothing good. I have nothing to say about Passion 22 except awesome things. I was so blown away. So session one started out with um, music, of course. They always start out with music. And so the first song was King of Kings, uh, sang by Hillsong, uh, Brooke Learwood. I think that's how you say her name. I don't know. Anyway, I, I love her voice. I love her talent. Anyway, she sang the song King of Kings. And, um, and then Passion sang Build My Life and A Thousand Names, which these are all great songs, and Christ Be Magnified, Shine Like Stars, and then this lady, I don't even know who she is, but she has a beautiful voice. She sang Beautiful Jesus, and that was such a beautiful song. And so a lot of these are new songs that Passion has put out with their new album, Burn Bright. They usually drop an album about the time that they have Passion um, every year in January. Okay, so I think they write the songs according to what they're going to share because everything fits perfectly together. 
Okay, so Levi Lusco was the first speaker that I saw. And he talked about important seasons in our lives. And um, so seek now your creator in the years of your youth. So as for, for any of you that don't know, passion that they have every year is geared towards college students in upper high school, like seniors, juniors, seniors. So everything that they talk about, your generation, we see your generation, they're talking to that generation. So that's why it says, seek now your creator in the years of your youth. But you know, that applies to any of us. We need to seek our creator. So, 2 Kings 7, 1 through 10, and I actually tried to share this the other day, and I just, I mean, my, my video was so bad, it was lagging so bad that I just deleted it from YouTube, it was so bad. Uh, 2 Kings got to find 2 Kings first. I believe it's to the left. I was proud of myself. I found, um, found Nehemiah this morning. 2 Kings. Now I have, I have noticed that since I do a quiet time every day and since I do this that takes me all over the Bible in the mornings I have learned where the books are better I still want to still want to send one of these free to someone they just need to tell me that they watched and they want this book okay so 2nd Kings 7 1 through 10, 7, 1 through 10. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about the time I'm going to have to get my Bible over here because <laughs> I can't read it. I have it stood up, which is really nice, but I can't read it. I think I need better lighting in here, too. Um, other than the ring light, I think I need better lighting above. Okay, thus says the Lord, and tomorrow about this time, a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an offer officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said um, this is Elisha that's talking a prophet one of God's prophets so an officer answered the man of God and said look if the Lord would make windows in heaven could this thing be and he said in fact you shall see it with your eyes but you shall not eat of it. So the Syrians flee. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said one to another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall surely die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the, vo the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us 
the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. And then they came back and entered another tent and carried some of, of there also and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. Even the leprous men knew that that wasn't right. This day is a day of good news, and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they went and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, saying, we went to the Syrian camp, and surprisingly, no one was there, not a human sound, only horses and donkeys tied, and the tents intact. And the gatekeepers called out, and they told it to the king's household inside. So the king arose in the night and said to his servants, Let me now tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get, and get into the city. And one of the servants answered and said, Please let several men take five of the remaining horses which are left in the city. Look, they may either become like all the multitude of Israel that are left in it, or indeed... I say they may become like all the multitude of Israel left from those who are consumed. Let us send them and see. Therefore they took two chariots with horses, and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army, saying, Go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan, and indeed all the road was full of garments and weapons which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a sea of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to save charge of the gate. But the people trampled him at the gate, and he died just as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. So it happened just as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two seahs of barley for a shekel, and a seah of fine flour for a shekel, shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And then that officer had answered the man of God and said, Now look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. So what, um, what Elisha said actually happened. Okay, well, this he did not really read all of this because he's a great speaker, and so he just started out reading it. But I wanted the context. That is the context. His, uh, his message was feast or famine. And he was talking about the leprous men, that they had a life of pain and shame. And so a lot of times we have to appreciate the bad news to appreciate the good news. So something that stuck out about this for me is that many times we know the good news. We know the good news of Jesus, but we hold back just like these men did. Well, we're going to plunder this tent and we're going to hide this silver and gold. Well, what we know about Jesus and salvation through Jesus is really more precious than silver and gold. But that just kind of stood out to me 
this time. He didn't say anything about that. That was just something that popped into my head. So he also talked about Matthew 24, and he referenced what is going on now, that in areas we do have great famines. And since this was global, they kind of, you know, um, addressed all the countries, which I thought was pretty nice. And so, um, he said, famine is heartbreaking. Um, and then he talked about the great potato famine from Ireland and um, how the Irish rebelled against England and somehow they were able to plant potatoes and grow potatoes in Ireland. And so they started growing and planting and growing potatoes and each person would eat 10 pounds of potatoes a day. But then the potato plants got a blight and that caused the great potato famine. I have heard about the great potato famine all my life. And if I learned it in history, I forgot what it was about. And uh, anyway, so he said that many people starved to death and that after the famine, disease follows famine. So he said they would eat anything they could. They fled to other countries. Now he said there were um, 8 million in Ireland at this time. So he said a million went to other countries. They fled to other countries. And two million came to the United States. And um, so they rebelled against England the same way that we rebelled against England, the United States, the King of England that wanted to um, enforce a religion that they didn't want to do. I'm not changing it right now. So he made some points here that I thought was really good. You don't need to have a lot to do a lot. So I guess in the case of these leprous um, men, they saved a kingdom because they went and told what they knew. They could have just saved it all for themselves, but they shared. They shared. So those outside the city announce the good things to the city. You can make a difference. Like we personally can make a difference. Another thing, hard times don't change you. They make you more of who you are. They reveal you. So when we go in hard, through hard times, it really tests our strength. And it gives us um, the opportunity to trust God more. So, build your life on the rock. There is a sound that terrifies the enemies. The enemy heard something. So you'll notice at the beginning of the story, God caused a noise, caused the Syrians to hear a noise that scared them. A noise of chariots and horses. It scared them, so they fled. Because this was always God's plan, you know. What happened here in this story was God's plan. So there is a sound that terrifies the enemy, and that is our worship, our prayer, and our testimony. And another uh, thing he said, in his providence, God can redeem what is his sovereignty. He could have prevented, you know, God could have prevented all this, but that, this was God's plan. This was God's fulfill, fulfilled plan that he shared with his prophet. So his prophet would go and tell them. Um, he has a plan to use it for his glory and our good. So things that we come go through, he uses for his glory and for our good. So God is always up to something. He is. He's always working on something. He is working on details. He already knows the solutions. And he already knows the outcome. Mm, I'm sorry, my nose itches. Um, 
So 8 million were in Ireland. This was pretty cool. So right now, all over the world, there's 80 million people with Irish ancestry. And I'm, I'm one of them. So if you go back to the 8 million that the story started with, with the potato famine, 10 times more Irish people, Irish people are all over the world. And he named some people that were from Irish descent. Henry Ford, Lennon, um, the Kennedys. Um, so the Irish people went into the whole world. So what he's telling us is that we need to go into the whole world and share the gospel of Jesus. Not everybody is called to go to another country. Sometimes we can do things, we can have an impact on another country by just giving, by just giving. Um, we can do that. I have, I have two adopted kids. I think one of them is from Colombia and the other one is from somewhere else. I'm not sure. But anyway, I pay to help with whatever they need, you know, once a month. It's it's a very small amount that I don't even miss. But I feel like that's part of my great commission. So we are called to go. And so how my relationship works with God is he, I ask him questions. He lays things on my heart, I ask him questions. And so my question was, where? Question mark. Where do you want me to go? And he said, I will let you know. And I said, thank you, God, for this message, because I truly feel like everyone that I listened to was confirming things that God was has already been telling me about this year. And so everything that I heard was a confirmation. Now, tomorrow night, I'm going to talk about what Tim Tebow said. I thought I was going to do it tonight, but I have, um, I have a visitor. My child is in here, and apparently he doesn't like what's on. But tomorrow night, we'll talk about Tim Tebow and what Tim Tebow said. And we may, we may have to double some of these people up. But I want to share with you all the music. And I want to share with you, if you'll look at the picture that I shared, um, it has a picture of all the music artists that were there and all the speakers. Um, except for Music City, I mean, Maverick City Music. They were there, but I didn't see them. I'm going to read what I shared today, if I can find it. I'm going to get it off my camera. If it will open up. Sometimes these things don't want to open up. I don't know. I'm not having the best luck with internet right now. Even um, where I went today, I had to like reboot my computer to get the internet back. I'm waiting on Facebook. I don't know why Facebook decided to like Usually I get a whole screen, and I'm not getting a whole screen. It's really up close. I haven't changed any of my settings, so I really don't understand. I'm just... Sometimes the adage, if it's not broke, don't fix it, 
really applies to some of these social media platforms. Like, what was wrong with that? It was working perfectly well. All right, so let's see if I can find this song that I shared. This is the song that I woke up singing this morning. Maybe if I'd get things set up a little earlier, it wouldn't be like this. Okay. Where's the rest of the song? There it is. Okay, so I woke up singing this song this morning, and it is by Cody Carnes and Corey Asbury and maybe others. I'm not sure if others wrote it or not. Well, my child left. Okay, so this song is Christ Be Magnified, and it was one of the songs that they sang this, was it this weekend? I don't know. It started Sunday and Monday, so it's really not a weekend, Sunday and Monday, and I love the lyrics of this song, and I shared it through New Song Cafe because I like to hear what the singers have to say, like what scriptures that reminded them of these lyrics, why they wrote these lyrics. And, um, uh, I'm not reading all of this. So, um, so what I watched Sunday and Monday, Passion 2022, there were 55,000 college students in attendance, including 41 countries involved, and no telling how many online people like me that were just viewing online were touched this year by this conference. This conference shows me the focus for my year. Every year I watch this. I, this is like my seventh year. In 2019, I went and served for uh, Passion. I went um, as a door holder. They call them door holders, but I went and volunteered in Grand Prairie was set to go to Georgia in 2020, but I got sick before I was fixing to go. But anyway, um, so during this conference, God confirmed a lot that he's already shared with me. So I felt a brokenness about past sin that I was able to receive breakthrough and be forever set free. So yesterday, before I watched yesterday, I put on this bracelet. Where is it? <laughs> it says, I am free. I am free. Yeah, I am free. I'm like, why? Where is the free? Okay, oh, it's backwards. I am free up here. I am free. It goes the right way. All right. Anyway, so I put this bracelet on, not thinking anything of it, and then I got to a point where this lady was talking about sin and repenting of our sin and the baggage, the burden that we carry around. Her name's Jenny Allen, and I'll share her message with you. And I just... It just really broke me. And um, so when I came in here to do my quiet time during a break, I asked God to forgive me for that. And I got set totally free from that. Um, but I will share with you her message. Her message was so, was so awesome. So awesome. All of these messages were so great. And I couldn't have imagined anything better for a younger generation to hear than what these messengers of God had to share. So God desires for all of his children to fulfill his plan and purpose. You know, we talked about that tonight. You know, this was God's plan. 
he made the enemy hear a noise. They ran off. Uh, this kingdom was starving to death. They needed food. God supplied. So this was God's plan. God wants to fulfill His plan and purpose for all of our lives. As God's children, that's what God wants for us. And uh, we have to grow closer to Him so He can direct our paths. And that means that we have to try to walk right behind Jesus. Like, we don't want to get lost. We don't want to lose the way. And we must walk in His ways, according to His word, according to His truth, to run our race and complete our Christianity journey here. So Christ be magnified worldwide. I just pray that Christ will be magnified worldwide. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So again, just more confirmation of what I, I saw and experienced. So I hope that something that I shared impacted you somehow. And um, if you come on here and watch this tonight, then please leave your name because I want to pray for you. If you want a free book, I'm going to have to order some more since I'm <laughs> like offering these. Uh, if you want a free book, I will put my email address in the um, comments. So I think that's all I want to share tonight. I think that um, I think I will share the gospel this way with this. This is something that God wanted me to create. Of course, it's not published or anything. I just typed it out. So God's invitation into his heaven. Have you ever been invited? The time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent and turn to the one true God. So here are some scriptures that go with salvation. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 23. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Hey, if any of my promised family are out there, I can so, when I read that scripture, I hear David Humphrey saying that scripture. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10:13. So this is what the Apostle John saw. And you can see it. YouTube people can see it on the other side. On the opposite side of really where it is. Oh my, where'd my camera go? There we are. Um, but Facebook cannot because I don't know. It was a really tight shot. <laughs> um, and John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So this is the prayer of salvation. 
If you would like to repeat this after me, then I will leave a space where you can. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are God's one and only Son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive. You died on the cross for all sinners. You rose from the tomb on the third day. You ascended into heaven, and you will come back to usher your church into heaven. I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to live and reign forever. Thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So if you prayed that prayer, if you accepted Jesus, it's a picture of Jesus opening the gates of heaven, then you are, the angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now sanctified. Wait a minute. Saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. Try not to be so repetitive. I'm really, that is something that I'm working on this year, but have set a lot of habits too with uh, being repetitive. So, anyway, you will see some different things when you come here because I broke the chain of being repetitive. And I just want to be more open. All right. Well, if you did say that prayer, then please read God's Word. God's Word is our book of instructions. And I'll be reading it until I die or until I fly out of here with Jesus. So, um, read it. Pray. Praise. Spend some time with God. Spend some quality time with God every day. Every day. All right. Well, let's pray. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this word that explains to us that your plan was fulfilled. You sent your messenger. You sent your prophet to tell them what was going to happen and perfectly how he expressed what was going to happen it happened, God. You have a plan and purpose for every one of us. You want only good things in our lives. And sometimes things happen to us because we don't make the right choices. So help us to listen to the Holy Spirit and His guidance every day. Help us, God, to continue to walk behind Jesus. As he is our shepherd, and He knows what's ahead, and we don't. God, please help us to have the boldness to go out to share your truths and the gospel of Jesus to anyone and everyone, to the ends of the earth, God. Everybody needs to know that Jesus died for them. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, all right, pray and share, warriors. I so enjoyed this time. So much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. God bless you and your families abundantly and good night.